I met my wife a few years ago at a hospital where I went to visit my friend's wife who just gave birth. Coincidentally, she came in at the same time, but because my friend's wife was asleep, we had to wait in the lobby for about 40 minutes to an hour before she woke up. People who know me well know I am very extroverted. And I talk to strangers a lot. While waiting, I tried making jokes with the nurses at the reception desk, but they weren't having it, so I went back to sit with my wife. I tried my best to keep my mouth shut, but we could tell that the silence was awkward. And the moment I started talking, we both busted into a loud laugh. I didn't know she had been observing me. She knew I would try to talk to her. From there, we talked for almost an hour until a nurse came to tell us my friend's wife was awake and we both went in to see her and her baby. As much as I would love to mention my wife's name so the people out there can stay away from her, I'd love to keep this anonymous in case any of our friends stumbles on this story. Before we left the hospital that day, I got my wife's number and we started talking. I also followed her on Facebook, and we chatted there all the time. She was gorgeous, and I loved almost everything about her. As of the time we met, she was working at a veterinary shop, and I worked for a construction company. We used to hang out whenever we were free since we were both single and slowly grew fond of each other. One of the reasons I loved my wife was that she was always seeking new ways to improve herself. She rents self-help books all the time and listened to all of those personal development podcasts and the rest. Honestly, she also helped me build the habits of reading books and trying to become better. And it made me glad to have a partner who cared about my growth. Fast forward to some months later, we got so close and we always told each other about what happened during work. Even without meeting my colleagues at work, she knew their names, roles, and everything that happened during work hours. The same applied to me. I knew everyone's name in the vet clinic she worked at, including the names of the animals that came in daily and those that returned. I was sure she was the one for me at that point, and I asked her out. When she said, yes, I asked her to move in with me so we could begin to plan our lives and future together. And she did. She moved in with me and we became a super couple. I loved her so much that I did everything for her. In fact, I didn't let her contribute to paying rent because I felt it was my responsibility to take care of her. I bought her whatever she wanted, and we went on many fancy dates together. Before I met my wife, I had been in three different relationships, but they all cheated on me and none of my exes cared about me like my wife did, so I believed she was the one for me. In less than three months of dating, I met her family, and she met mine too. Our families knew we were dating each other and we were pretty serious too. So after ten months of dating and living with each other, I asked her to marry me and she said, yes. Before we got married, we both agreed we would have kids after three years of being married so we could spend time with each other do the things we loved and not have to put our lives on hold. Then most importantly, we would have saved enough money to give our children a comfortable life. A year after we got married, nothing changed, and everything was still beautiful and blissful, like when we were still dating. But things began to change between us after we celebrated our second year anniversary. My wife began to show less interest in the things she used to love, including our second anniversary, which she used to look forward to, and that's when I began to suspect that something was wrong. It all started with her obsession with personal development, and she claimed she found this new mentor online. A man in his late 30s, who she asked to mentor her for a fee, and he agreed. According to my wife, this man was a life coach, and he had mentored many people in the past and helped them build their lives. At first, I didn't have an issue with her having a mentor because I knew she wouldn't back down or change her mind until she got what she wanted so I allowed her to do her thing. However, a couple of weeks after she started her mentorship classes with him, I noticed they were getting closer and closer. And I kept feeling that something was off between them, but I shook it off. It wasn't enough that I was paying for the mentorship hourly, but she always came up with new excuses for me to pay for things I didn't understand. She met with her mentor almost every week, and even had to cancel most of our lunch dates to be with him. Then as if that wasn't enough, 
Whenever I came home from work, I'd have to eat my dinner alone, watch television alone, and go to bed because she would talk to him for hours on the phone without spending time with me. I complained about it, but she said I was making a mountain out of a molehill, so I let it slide, expecting that she would change, but it got worse. Once we were supposed to go to my parents' house for my dad's 62nd birthday, but she didn't show up and refused to take my calls. That evening when I returned home, I met her and her mentor having dinner in her home, and I was so mad. When she saw me she smiled and acted like everything was fine. It even made me madder when I found out she forgot about her Avail's birthday, even after I reminded her that morning. The craziest part was that we had not had dinner as a couple for weeks, and she even stopped cooking, but there she was eating and laughing with her mentor. I got so mad and yelled at her. Then I asked her mentor to leave, but she stood up and started challenging me in front of her mentor. She said he had taught her a lot of things, and he could not leave, so I had to choose between joining them for dinner or doing something else. I was so furious that I left the house and returned to spend the night at my parents' house. That night, I stayed awake close to my phone, hoping she would call and beg me. But she didn't. And that was when I was forced to look up her mentor online. To my greatest surprise, I spent hours digging and could not find anything related to mentorship. Private investigator to investigate him. Weeks after digging, the pie, I hired Discover. He was a convicted felon and a master manipulator with arrest warrants. I could not even believe it. The pie could not find anything related to mentorship with him, and that's when I realized that my wife had been playing me for months. She was getting money from me and giving it to her lover as his payment while I worked my ass up to give her a better life. I collected all the evidence from my pie, and paid him off. The next day, I went home early so I could meet my wife at home and show her all of the evidence, but I caught them doing it on my couch and I was enraged I hid him before I threw the evidence on the table, and my wife did not look surprised. It was an indication that she knew everything about him. She then started begging for forgiveness and asked me not say anything. I told that my aunt contacted the police, and she should go go ahead and marry her lover and rot in jail for all I care. While I was yelling at them, the police arrived at my house and took him away. Immediately, he was taken away. She went on her knees and began to beg me. She said he manipulated her, but since he was out of the picture, we could return to how we were. Hearing that made me madder, so I kicked her out and called her parents to let them know their daughter would be coming home soon, and we weren't together anymore. Months later, we divorced, and we went our separate ways. Until the last six months, she kept calling me with different numbers, until I warned her that we could never be together, even if it were in her next life. Of course, I miss her, but being single is way better than living with a cheating spouse even the last few months of our marriage were hell for me, so I'm glad I made the right decision. Oh, P. I wonder why you didn't look up your wife's mentor before she started her mentorship classes. That was carelessness on your own part. It's just terrible that she played you and manipulated you to pay for classes that did not exist. Although it's hard, you made the right decision by kicking her out of your house and divorcing her. Such a woman does not deserve second chances because she would have cheated on you again, even if you forgave her. It's even more disturbing that she didn't show any remorse when you showed her the pieces of evidence, but, but most importantly, she is no longer in your life. Thank you for sharing with us. Now let's get into our second story for today. My wife and I fell apart after two years of marriage. My wife and I started dating around 2020 after the coronavirus struck the world. She had lost her family of three to the virus, and as her, her closest family friend, I had no other option than to take her in. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment, one was my bedroom and the other was my office because I was already working remotely for a top freelancing platform whose name I would be withholding and I had to move my office to my bedroom so she could sleep in the second room. When she moved in, she was grieving, always moody, and almost depressed, and I took up the responsibility of caring for her all through her stay with me. At that time, I was earning very well, 
so I didn't need her to contribute to anything, not even groceries. She barely ate and was not herself for the first few months. Seven months later, she snapped out of her morning state and became active again. Then she started looking for a job. The main reason she wanted a job was to pay me back for all the things I had done for her. But when I found out, I stopped her from working, and suggested that she learn a high-demand skill so she could register on the same platform I worked at and also earn remotely. She agreed and I paid for an expensive course for her, and she mastered the skill. In the following months, she registered on the platform and began to get her own clients. That was how we became two remote workers living together. When my wife moved in with me after she lost her parents, I had just broken up from a toxic relationship, and the last thing I wanted was a relationship. But having my wife in the house all the time helped me in some way and caused me to reevaluate the important things in life. So in the process of her living with me, I fell in love with her even without knowing. With her becoming active again, our relationship grew stronger and we even became closer. I literally became her only friend and family, and slowly, we started doing the things only couples did. We went on vacations together because we were both financially stable, got each other gifts, visited the places we always wanted to, and we even took more advanced courses to help us in our skills. After living together for two years, the neighbors and those who stayed or worked around her house knew we were together, even when I had not asked her out yet. I knew she loved me, but I was afraid she would turn me down because kept saying she was tired of people coming into her life and leaving her when she needed them the most. So I kept procrastinating. Eventually, I asked her out on her 27th birthday. We weren't doing anything that year. We only went to have a fancy dinner. And while we were in the restaurant, I paid the waiter to bring in a cake I had delivered some hours before we went there. And instead of having happy birthday, it had, will you be my girlfriend? And she said, yes, an excitement. Initially, I intended to propose to her, but I wanted to ask her out first. Four months later after she said yes to me, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. My parents already knew her because her late family and my family were friends and they were delighted when they found out we were getting married. We made the wedding plans and had a small wedding then moved into a bigger apartment with enough space for our respective workspace. When we moved into this new apartment, my wife was jovial and always in high spirits with the neighbors. The neighbors too were receptive and welcoming. Unlike my former neighbors who were always busy and barely had a time to speak or talk with us, for more than five minutes. When this happened, I was delighted because she had a different happiness spending time with the neighbors, especially since she lost her family and barely interacted with others, except my family and me. She even started cooking and sharing food with the neighbor and their kids, and it contributed to their closeness. Being remote workers allowed us to create our own work timetable. And whenever she was done working, she would go grocery shopping and come back home to cook. She claimed that cooking helped her clear her head and sharing food with other people reminded her of her family reunions and much more. I understood her point of view, so I didn't argue with her or try to stop her even when some of the neighbors started taking advantage of her kind gesture. Aside from the food, some neighbors began to ask for financial assistance, which we helped whenever we could. And there was this 80-year-old man asked if she could help him cook on some evings and clean his house too since he had no family living with him. So when my wife told me about it, I reluctantly agreed and she'd go over to his house twice or thrice a week to cook and clean. About a month after she started cooking and cleaning for him, I noticed she went there almost every evening, except on weekends. This was more often than their initial agreement, but I thought everything was okay. Then one day, I was in my apartment watching television when I heard a knock on the door. I knew it was unlike my wife to knock when she had her keys. So I opened the door and realized it was our neighbor she cooked for. When I saw him, I thought he had come to thank me and my wife for her help, but he looked somewhat disturbed. When he sat and I asked him if everything was okay, he first said, Son, I want your wife to stop coming over to my house because she is having an affair with my renter, 
Then he stopped and looked at me. I was shocked to hear that and didn't know what to say. I asked him if he was telling the truth and he admitted that he had no reason to lie. When we were having this discussion in my apartment, my wife had gone grocery shopping to cook the next day. So she wasn't at home. I didn't want to believe the old man, but like he said, he had no reason to lie, and it made no sense for him to lie against my wife. So in the end, I asked him if he could show me something to prove that he was telling the truth, and he promised to make a video and send it to me when next she came over, which would be her last time visiting his house. That evening, when my wife came back, I didn't mention anything to her. I just acted like everything was fine. And I didn't say that the old man came over when she was away. The next evening, she told me she was going there as usual, and I pretended to not pay any attention and acted like I was engrossed with my work. About 15 minutes after she left, the old man sent me a video of my wife in his renter's room, and they were making out in the living room, thinking he was asleep in his room. When I saw the video, I was broken. I knew the man she was kissing, and could not believe she had done that to me. I thanked him and told him I'd be locking her out of the house, and he promised to do the same because his renter was late on rent payment. And he had enough of him. Later that evening, when my wife came home and could not access the house, she started to yell and hit the door. But I sent her the same video, and she began to beg me from outside. She asked me to open the door to discuss things, but I was done with her. She betrayed me and did not care about my feelings. On the other end, her lover was kicked out by the old man, and they were both homeless that evening. I refused to let her in that night. And after a few days, she returned to meet her stuff packed at one corner of the house, but she refused to leave. I called the police because she was disturbing my peace and the neighbor's peace, and she was taken away. About two months later, I divorced her and she cried bitterly. She tried to emotionally blackmail me into staying with her but I had enough of her nonsense. She said something about me being the only person she had left in the world, but I reminded her she had her, her lover now, and I cut all ties with her. It turned out that her lover was an illegal immigrant, and he fled the country when I threatened to arrest him on the day. My wife came to pick up her things. So in the end, he left her and she had no one else to turn to. It's been a couple of months, and I still feel stupid for being played like that but I'm way better now. And I don't think I'll be ready to be in a relationship anytime soon. Op, you ended up with bad people in the past, and they took your love for granted. You should even be glad that your wife eventually showed her true colors early in the marriage and didn't lead you on for years. It would have been more heartbreaking with time. Consider yourself lucky to have a nice neighbor who could not watch your wife cheat on you. I know you did a lot for her but this has nothing to do with you being at fault. I'm glad you made the right decision. Wish you all the best going forward. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please